Good afternoon. Welcome to AUGA Group meeting with investors. I'm Emilia from NASDAQ Vilnius and I'm delighted to be the moderator for the today's event. We will start with the presentation from the management, which will be followed by the Q&A session. As always, I encourage every one of you to ask questions during or after the presentation in the question box of your screen. With that said, I'm pleased to introduce today's presenter, the Chief Financial Officer, Mindogas Ambrasas. Mr. Ambrasas, please, the floor is yours. Good luck. Thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as always, uh, uh, thank you for joining this conference uh, and uh, thank you for your interest uh, in our group. Uh, and um, let's uh, go through the presentation. So, as uh, maybe you could already saw from uh, our public announcements or report we published a couple of days ago, uh, for the first half of uh, 2021, our results were, I would say, very similar to the results uh, we had uh, last year. Of course, if to be precise, we had very small decrease in uh, like major categories, uh, revenue, uh, profit, uh, BDA. And you know, almost uh, after two years of uh, similar presentations, that then every time uh, we had the possibility to talk about growth, uh, about improvement, uh, uh, I would say we stumbled a little bit uh, this this quarter of this uh, first half of the year. But there are some specific reasons of um, this uh, uh, decrease or, or slower growth, and I will try to tell you a little bit more about uh, such reasons. But uh, despite this, uh, <clears throat> we have, uh, I believe, quite uh, positive developments uh, in our strategy implementation. So I, I will uh, touch uh, the subject uh, a little bit later as well. Uh, so as always, uh, let's go through main uh, business segments uh, of our group. Uh, and I will try to give you uh, more details about uh, results and reasons uh, for that. Uh, as always, uh, let's start from crop growing. Uh, and for the first half of the year, um, gain uh, uh, from revaluation uh, for full uh, harvest uh, was uh, 6.5 million euros, generally in very similar level for what we had last year. And as we accounted almost 2 million uh, euros uh, in the last year's report. So generally, we have uh, 4.5 million euros reported in the first half uh, of the year. Um, if we talk about uh, harvest, uh, I think um, uh, us and, and the market in general were very optimistic about uh, this year's harvest uh, up uh, till uh, June because uh, conditions for sowing uh, in, in winter, uh, in autumn, uh, winter, and then spring uh, were quite uh, good uh, for, for agriculture. Uh, unfortunately, this situation changed uh, in uh, July, uh, and due to, I would say, extreme uh, heat uh, we had in Lithuania and, and in our region, which was maybe nice uh, for those who were on holidays uh, during that uh, period of time, it really had a negative uh, effect on uh, yields uh, in agriculture, especially for uh, summer uh, crops. Uh, and though it's, uh, I, I would say, a little bit too early to, to, to estimate and say the final result uh, of those changes and how this will affect uh, our annual harvest and, and results for second half of the year, uh, I think uh, we can say that uh, for this year uh, expectation of, of the harvest is really that it will be lower uh, what we had uh, last year and from what we see uh, from probably public institutions from comments uh, from our uh, colleagues that uh, similar uh, situation is not only in organic farming but in conventional farming as well so if we talk about figures we already uh, even, uh, you know, we are talking about the events which happened in the third quarter al already, but we already started uh, to make some adjustments uh, in our expectations toward uh, the yields uh, in, in the second uh, quarter. But we also see that this uh, trend uh, uh, of changes in, in forecasts uh, regarding uh, the crops will continue in the second uh, half of, of the year. And uh, as I said, uh, uh, it seems that uh, factual uh, results uh, will be lower uh, for what we had uh, last year. Uh, 
But uh, I would say we would be comfortable giving much uh, more uh, clear situation and, and results uh, in, in the next uh, presentation when we'll have majority of our uh, harvest already harvested and, and the situation will be clear because still uh, lots of things uh, are changing uh, which could have either positive or negative effect from positive uh, changes uh, we still have a situation in the market that uh, prices the trend of the prices is, is really positive for us the prices uh, grow and, and this could have positive effect on on our financial results Secondly, uh, if you remember last year, we had an issue with uh, quality, uh, at least with major culture for us, uh, wheat. And uh, from the first results of harvest, uh, what we see this year, we see that uh, I would say we got back to normal and the uh, quality of, of wheat uh, is, is much better uh, uh, for what we had last year. So generally, these are like positive uh, developments. But I also have to say that uh, those positive developments really will not offset uh, losses uh, for what we have from uh, possibly lower uh, yields uh, for the year. Uh, if we talk about the uh, second big part uh, of uh, agriculture, of crop growing segment, uh, it's uh, sales uh, of our uh, previous year harvest. Uh, so as you can see from the figures, we had, I would say, substantial uh, drop in revenues, uh, almost uh, 12%. And uh, this was the main factor why our overall sales uh, of the group uh, or consolidated level has decreased. Uh, but uh, this is, uh, I would say, more uh, mathematical uh, thing uh, than something uh, which has affected our business. Because you know, if we talk about sales of uh, crop growing, so generally you can sell as much as you grown last season. So um, uh, if we compare uh, how the harvest of last year and year before that was sold, as you can see from, uh, from the slide, that uh, last year, bigger part uh, of uh, uh, the harvest uh, was uh, sold in the first financial year. So uh less was left uh, for this year and uh, in previous year we had uh, i would say very similar parts of the harvest sold every year so that's why the biggest uh, change comes from that and uh, you know you really can't do much about this because as i said you generally can sell what what you you have uh, after the harvest and uh, there are several reasons why this uh, fluctuates uh, quarter to quarter you know first of all uh, we have some agreements with our customers when we want to buy and then we want to receive uh, the product. Uh, there are also uh, timing decisions when we believe it's better for us to sell and to get uh, maximum uh, price and maximum profitability uh, and, and, and other reasons. So that was the reason why this uh, revenues uh, decreased. And, and as I said, we had uh, like the largest impact on overall sale uh, decrease on, on a group level as, as well. Uh, combined with uh, subsidies, which uh, has decreased, and as it was mentioned uh, during presentation uh, uh, last time, uh, that this year we are getting organic subsidies for all uh, land we are cultivating that was not the case in previous years when we were getting uh, this uh, organic subsidies for only 26,000 hectares instead of 4,000 so this gave us some boost in the subsidies amounts and this allowed us uh, to have uh, uh, better gross profit on the segment uh, though some 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 other areas uh, they, they 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 had some uh, i would say uh, negative uh, developments. Uh, and just to elaborate uh, a little bit uh, on this uh, positive uh, uh, developments, which still could have uh, at least partly compensate uh, negative development related to uh, yields. Uh, here you can see uh, uh, prices of organic and conventional wheat in, in Germany. That's our benchmark uh, we are using just to understand the trends and, and understand uh, how we are doing with our sales. So as you can see, uh, maybe I have to explain this uh, fluctuation of uh, organic uh, wheat uh, prices because this is like the top quality wheat, which is, uh, and there are very small amounts uh, of this wheat sold. And uh, that's why there is quite a big fluctuation. So it not always uh, shows the real trend. 
And uh, usually just before the harvest, there is always a drop of the price because everyone is selling remaining uh, last year harvest and, and this uh, creates some, some uh, uh, additional supply and that's how it grows. But overall, as you can see, the trend is, is, is quite clear that uh, prices are going up. And if we just calculate in average, so we have like 10% 10, 10 growth for organic wheat uh, price in Germany, uh, comparing first half of the year this year, uh, with the same period uh, last year. Uh, if we talk about Auga Group, uh, uh, we already, uh, for two days ago, generally end of uh, August, uh, we contracted 69% uh, of uh, our expected uh, harvest. So there is still quite significant room uh, if the strain to continue to, to, to benefit uh, from that. And if we talk about uh, wheat price especially, so as you can see from the note in the presentation, if we just calculate what's the average price we are selling our wheat uh, this year and expect to sell the remaining part of the wheat, so it's 16% higher uh, with our result last year. Uh, of course, it's uh, affected not only by uh, increase in price, it's affected by better quality, as I mentioned previously. And I would say this uh, increase in price for wheat is above total increase for total portfolio of crops. But still, uh, this is uh, just a point uh, to prove that there are some, some areas uh, where we see some uh, positive uh, developments. Uh, <clears throat> dairy. Uh, uh, I think it was already mentioned last time uh, during the uh, first quarter presentation that we had uh, some problems in uh, uh, production, uh, which led uh, to two things. First of all, we didn't achieve uh, uh, growth of the yields, which we were hoping for, because uh, this trend of uh, growth of yields really continued for a couple of years, and we still see lots of room to improve there. Uh, but this has stopped uh, and also this uh, increased uh, our costs in, in dairy. So uh, as, I, as I told last time, uh, we just made some changes in our feed structure. We put uh, more expensive feed, but unfortunately the result which came at the end was not positive. And it takes uh, some time to, to correct that, to change that and to, to, to improve the situation. So what we can say that we already started to see uh, from the results uh, in the second quarter that uh, at least in uh, June, we already see, uh, I would say maybe 4% doesn't look uh, that impressive, that it's quite a significant figure for us. So it's all, we already see 4% growth uh, in yields. If we compare uh, yields in the same, uh, with the same uh, month a uh, year ago, so some changes we did uh, in terms of feed, in terms of management, in terms of technologies and people, it already starts uh, to show uh, some results. Uh, totally, uh, uh, we are still uh, working with uh, our herd. Uh, we are still working with a plan to increase uh, this uh, to 3.6 thousand cows. Uh, uh, maybe it doesn't uh, uh, materialize as quickly as we would like uh, to have. But overall, we had um, slightly more uh, bigger number of cows and uh, with uh, similar yields, uh, we produced uh, almost the same, slightly more tons on milk uh, in the first quarter of, in the first half year uh, of 2021 comparing to, to the last year. Uh, due to some changes, uh, just uh, like logistical changes in, in sales and also just because we have a bigger number of heifers, so we will have to use more milk uh, internally for some period of time till, till we reach uh, age of, of, of the cow. So uh, a bigger um, uh, proportion of milk used for, for our purposes led that even though production was on the same level, sales decreased uh, very slightly uh, uh, if talk about the milk uh, uh, for, for the first quarter uh, of the year in terms of uh, tolls. But overall, uh, I would say we have quite positive uh, situation in the market uh, in terms of sales. Uh, uh, for the second year in the row, we are selling uh, almost everything, 90 plus uh, percent of our milk as organic. So uh, I think this situation will not change. So that's why we even don't have this graph in our presentation anymore. And uh, we also started uh, 
to sell in a few new markets, Germany is an example, and all this led that we were able to achieve a slightly better price, so 4% growth of price comparing uh, this year's uh, results uh, to, to last year's results. Um, so all those developments um, together with uh, uh, revaluation of biological assets, as I said, we are still working on this uh, improvement of our herd, which means that we are changing cows, we are uh, writing down some older, not productive cows, and what uh, led to having higher uh, negative revaluation, so which uh, all this led uh, to some negative uh, gross profit for the segment for the first half of the year, uh, comparing so to some very small uh, plus uh, last year, but I would say uh, latest developments uh, are quite positive, and if we will be able to continue with uh, increasing yields, uh, uh, we will uh, hopefully will see positive uh, changes in the final results of the segment as well. And just to add some information about those changes in the yields, uh, as you can see from the graph, as I said, uh, we had. Uh, uh, last year very positive development and, and we had this issue when, when our growth of yields really stopped uh, and we had even lower yields in uh, April, uh, May, but uh, now we already see uh, positive uh, changes and, and that's really our target and our goal. We still see uh, room for, for improvement in, in this area. So together with uh, some changes in our production, uh, renewal of of, uh, of the herd and uh, hopefully the possibility to already start some of technologies we are developing and um, maybe I will elaborate about this a little bit later. So this really gives uh, belief that uh, this segment still has a room for improvement and, and we should see this in, in the upcoming periods. Uh, mushrooms. Uh, um, I think uh, for the last uh, year, uh, we were saying that this is the segment uh, which uh, faces uh, the largest uh, risk uh, related uh, to COVID. Uh, and uh, as it is really labor intense, and uh, uh, though previously we had some effect uh, from the COVID on results based on sales, on customer behavior, changes in the market, Unfortunately, in the second quarter of this year, uh, we really had an effect uh, on, on our employees. So generally, we had uh, a significant number of uh, employees in our production facilities uh, in the mushroom growing segment, which either were ill or which either had to be in quarantine. So generally, they, they couldn't uh, be in the job. And this uh, really created uh, challenges for us because, uh, first of all, uh, production uh, cycle is, is quite long, five, six uh, uh, weeks. Generally, you know, you have to, to, to go through the process. And if at the end of the day, you just don't have uh, production capacity or people to, to uh, pick up the mushrooms, uh, generally you uh, are losing your production capacity. And that's what would really happen in, in the second uh, quarter of uh, 2021. As you can see from, uh, from the comments, uh, uh, our uh, you know, produced uh, number uh, amount of, of uh, mushrooms uh, decreased uh, from almost 6.5 thousand tons to 6.2 thousand uh, tons uh, in a quarter. Uh, and uh, uh, it's for this uh, first half of the year, and majority of that happened in the second quarter. Uh, so uh, generally, uh, what how this affected our PNL? Um, unfortunately, we didn't, uh, you know, we couldn't sell the product, uh, but uh, generally we had to occur majority of costs due to long uh, production process. Uh, you know, we had either to, in some technological way, to stop growing of the mushroom or if you know we are not able to pick them up we generally had to throw some of, of production uh, which was already in, in the compost uh, away and uh, you know this this is uh, you know we we thought we implemented lots of procedures to minimize the risk uh, there are lots of things done to to to, to uh, 
keep our employees safe uh, and, and we're still doing a lot uh, but but this situation really affected our results in the second quarter uh, of of the year uh, looking forward uh, of course uh, uh, what we did and what we believe would help us to avoid this uh, uh, situation in the future uh, vaccination was really priority of the company and, and we did a lot to motivate people to to, to do the vaccination so up to today um, almost 70 percent of employees in, in production units are fully vaccinated so hopefully this will have positive effect and we will have we will have no this uh, issue in the upcoming periods uh, uh, because uh, other than that uh, i would say uh, summer and covid uh, created quite a good environment for us uh, in the market in, in, in general because due to hot weather uh, due to the same issues with covid in, in other production for sale facilities in the market uh, then uh, uh, demand uh, for for the mushrooms uh, really exceeds uh, supply side so uh, the the biggest problem and the biggest challenge is really to to get all the production facilities uh, working in full capacity and this should get back to to, to normal situation uh, as, as we planned and as we had for a couple of years um fmcg uh, and here uh, I would say uh, we have maybe more positive uh, uh, developments and though some detailed analysis uh, could raise questions that uh, growth in, in the second quarter standalone uh, was uh, not that big. Uh, I think it's uh, only 8% if you just take uh, figures only and, and compare them. Uh, but still, uh, we believe that uh, 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 results are quite good. Uh, what happened in in the uh, in the segment and how this affected uh, our results? Uh, we had some uh, uh, changes in logistic, which had effect on on our business because uh, I think you know that uh, right now we have a situation in the world that logistics uh, logistic costs are increasing significantly, and in some cases uh, there is a problem really to find the logistic capacities if you want to transport something uh, to us uh, to far east uh, so though uh, in terms of uh, results uh, logistic in bigger part of our contracts uh, the costs are on our consumer side uh, but uh, we had uh, effect from different angle so what our consumers uh, changed in, in their behavior even started uh, to uh, reduce uh, quantity of uh, orders but increase the uh, value of orders so what uh, we see and i will elaborate on uh, on that a little bit later that you know we have larger orders and uh, it happened that we just uh, switched from the second uh, quarter of this year to the third quarter of, of this year uh, i will elaborate on that a little bit later but talking about overall results as you can see uh, we have um, still good growth in terms of revenue and uh, what is maybe i would say even more important we we will we are able to continue with uh, quite uh, uh, sustainable and and, and good uh, profit margin uh, for for uh, for half year so this uh, profitability of 25 percent is is uh, i would say already sustainable and this really gives us a good feeling about uh, segments development in the future and just uh, to, to elaborate on on those uh, uh, changes or um, uh, logistic issues uh, which which uh, maybe just created for us you know it's not a big issue you just have to organize uh, your production in a little bit different way uh, so uh, just to to prove my point uh, here you can see uh, a graph showing sales in one of our key markets uh, maybe it doesn't matter what market it is and maybe it's not important uh, overall figures but as you can see from the graph uh, sales uh, in the second quarter we were almost on the same level what we had last year but generally uh, sales really picked up in uh, june july and august and that's really the the story in the segment overall and uh, as you can see from 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 the comments that 
already in uh, July we had uh, sales uh, growing by 69% comparing to the sales in July last year. And also if we just look at our standing uh, orders uh, amount at the end of the quarter, so at the end of the quarter we had uh, orders which will be done and uh, executed and sold in usually one three months uh, for almost 1.6 million euros. And that's not all orders we will have because orders, you know, will will new orders will come during those periods as well. So overall, uh, yes, uh, second quarter uh, showed uh, less growth, uh, but this uh, is just like technical cor uh, correction. Uh, overall segment is, is still showing good results in terms of growing, in terms of, of profitability, and uh, we still believe that uh, this uh, trend will continue. If we talk about growth, uh, majority of growth this year comes uh, from same customers. So generally, we are selling more to our existing customer base. And maybe that's, uh, I would say, bigger focus from our side, because now we already have very uh, broad geography where we are selling our products. The list of our customers is, is quite long. So you need, you, we need somehow to make uh, everything effective. So that was like the bigger uh, focus uh, to, to increase cooperation with existing customers and that's where the growth really comes from this year. But what we're also doing, we are trying to introduce new products. So just as an example, I'm using this uh, possibility to, to do some PR work for, for our colleagues that new products are coming for our most important and the most popular product group, soups. They are already in some of the markets and, and hopefully, you know, we will have some um, maybe marketing campaign and it will be better here than known uh, for general public in, in Lithuania as well. Um, some financial information uh, you already saw uh, overall uh, figures uh, that we had a slight decrease in the BDA uh, this year comparing to the first half of uh, last year. Uh, and uh, uh, as we discussed uh, through the segments, uh, there were some negative developments in, in crop growing, dairy, mushrooms, and FMCG. Uh, this is really the segment which uh, provides some positive change uh, year on year, comparing, uh, uh, talking about our result. Uh, another important uh, thing uh, which we always try to, to, to show for, for everyone is our uh, financial situation with financing. So generally after all those major changes uh, we did last year, I think uh, now we are in quite stable situation and our debt level remains quite stable. Yes, there is some fluctuation, but it's mainly due to seasonal activities. And that's usually how, how the situation changes during the, the, during the year uh, for the last couple of years. Uh, more importantly, this uh, stability in, in, in our financing, uh, our overall activity really uh, gave us uh, possibility to uh, invest uh, or spend more on our investments and uh, on our R&D, uh, which, as I mentioned in our very beginning, that this is really the focus of the group because uh, as the group, we are really focusing a lot on implementation on our sustainability strategy because we really believe that that's really the future of Auga Group where the largest part of our growth uh, and value will come in, in, in the future. Uh, just a reminder, uh, if, you, if you remember from, from uh, our strategy presentation, there are several uh, technologies we are currently working and we are working on those technologies for two, three years already. Uh, so biogas uh, cycle, uh, biogas vehicles, uh, feed technology, uh, and uh, this year we we invested significantly uh, more uh, into these uh, areas than we did last year. So as you can see, more than six million comparing to a little more than two million uh, last year, and. Uh, uh, as I, we also wrote in our uh, financial reports, uh, we really believe that we made some progress uh, in uh, uh, those uh, R&D developments. And uh, we believe uh, that uh, we will be able uh, to, to show and present those uh, developments to, to the public uh, in the, the nearest future. So uh, 
as, as, as also what mentioned in the report, uh, uh, we still maybe need to, to do some final things, the final touches, and that's not uh, the topic for today's discussion. But uh, I, as I said earlier, uh, we, we see really uh, a significant improvement and significant achievements in those uh, programs, what we are doing. And uh, I would say that uh, I'm, I'm quite sure that uh, we will have uh, more news on the subject uh, up till the next uh, similar presentation, the, the next uh, quarter uh, results. So this is uh, really important uh, for us. Uh, and uh, this is really, uh, I would say, our key uh, area of focus uh, for the last year and the largest uh, investment in terms of financing, in terms of people, because you know, for agricultural company, we already have team of engineers uh, working uh, completely on, on those new technologies. We have several agreements with third parties which are helping uh, the, the, those technologies but as i said uh, i think we will have separate uh, event and separate uh, presentation uh, for this topic in, in the nearest future plan and as always uh, information about uh, the performance uh, of uh, august talk uh, uh, i think uh, you know uh, maybe it's difficult to comment on that uh, uh, we're always uh, happy that uh, we are becoming more popular in terms of investors, uh, not only talking about shares, but also our bonds. They, for, for quite long period of time, are the most popular corporate bonds in, in the Baltic. So, you know, we're really uh, happy that uh, more and more investors are uh, interested in AUGA, following AUGA and seeing what we are doing and, and uh, what is uh, the situation. And as always, you can find uh, more information in, in our web page, uh, Excel files with the figures and, and, and other information which was presented he here today. So I think that's uh, it for, from, from my side for the presentation. And uh, maybe now we can go uh, to the questions. Thank you very much for the presentation. And uh, now I would like to encourage everyone of you to use the question box of your screen for the questions. Uh, we have received several uh, now, so let's proceed. The first question is as follows. Has there been any recent progress in selling more FMTG, FMCG products to Europe? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, very good question, and I would say quite pain, painful question for us. Uh, because uh, obviously uh, Europe is our key target. Uh, this is a huge market, a huge organic market, and uh, we were not very successful uh, in, in, in the market up to today. Uh, in the first half of, of 2021, uh, we had some small developments, but I wouldn't say that uh, there is some huge success uh, or something uh, we could uh, really uh, uh, tell uh, to the investors and, and show that this is really uh, sustainable and this will have a positive uh, effect in, in the longer perspective. Because, yes, uh, we have some small first sales in uh, Germany and Denmark, which both are very important markets and big markets, uh, but it's really the first uh, steps only. Uh, other uh, new sales we really came more from not from Western Europe but from Central Europe countries, uh, Czech, Hungary, Slovakia, I believe. Uh, so uh, up to date, I would say, as I said, it's it's quite painful question for 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 all of us in in our group because we really see you you as our home market, and of course uh, there is really uh, focus and goal uh, to, to break into this market uh, more successfully than we did uh, up to date, but uh, we're still working on that. Thank you very much for your comment. Another question is as follows. Uh, could you please comment on development of innovative technologies in the latest financial report? Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think I will just have to repeat myself uh, that uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we we have some uh, really successes here, but uh, uh, we will come back with more detailed information, much more explanation about this uh, in the nearest future. 
thank you very much. And uh, maybe you could also comment on uh, on the business uh, in the USA, how how it is going. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, Opposite to EU, uh, we already are uh, in US, uh, and this is a good thing. So generally, US is now the largest market uh, in terms of countries uh, for, for our FMCG business. And uh, for this year, uh, we still have uh, substantial growth in the market. I think uh, uh, up till September, we already will reach uh, the same sales uh, for what we had uh, for full uh, year 2020. Uh, uh, overall, uh, we had uh, agreements with quite big number of uh, retailers and the largest retailers in, in the US. So, uh, you know, it depends on, on, on them. Uh, with some of them, Costco, for example, we are significantly expanding uh, our cooperation. And generally now, this year, we are selling to uh, all the regions of Costco, as, as we started from only few regions uh, in the US uh, with them. So now we are all over US in, in, in Costco. With some uh, this uh, cooperation and growth of cooperation is not that uh, successful, but overall, as I said, uh, uh, we are growing. Uh, I think we will have at least 30% of sales growth year on year in the uh, US uh, standalone this year as well. Thank you very much. Uh, another question that we received is as follows. Do you expect to see an increase in share of organic mushrooms? Organic mushrooms share, share price seems to be higher year over year, as well as margins looks, look better than in non-organic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, another question and another very painful topic uh, for, 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 for us. Um, uh, switching to organic uh, mushrooms is a long-term plan for us, and this is like the biggest uh, uh, possibility to improve uh, results of mushroom business. Because as it's clear, it's also stated in, in the question that uh, margins are much, much better in, uh, in organic mushrooms. Um, and uh, for different reasons, uh, we are not able to increase uh, share of organic market uh, for the last couple of years. That was really the focus of sales organization in, in mushroom business uh, for a few years already. Uh, you know, we have dedicated team in place. We have dedicated people in place. Uh, for you know, for a long period of time, uh, we had COVID uh, as maybe an excuse uh, that it's difficult to introduce new product categories uh, with our customers. Uh, but, uh, you know, with, this is still a major focus for the company. It's still a biggest upside in the mushroom business, and we still need to focus more and more on that. So this is really, will continue, and uh, hopefully we will get uh, results uh, sooner than later. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to remind every one of you that you are very welcome to send in your questions in the question box of your screen. And another question that we received is the following. First half a year crop sales were at a loss in both 2021 and 2020. Does this mean the year and fair value gain is too high? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, um, it's, it's really complicated question to give a very simple answer. Um, uh, if just to give an answer, uh, I would say um, I, I believe that it doesn't mean that you know we we give uh, uh, not fair value of of, of the gain at, at the end of the year because there is a methodology how we calculate uh, the value. And you know it's really based on uh, contract prices. It's based on uh, uh, prices in the market if uh, the product is not uh, sold yet. Uh, so generally, there are you know specific things we have to evaluate and and uh, set uh, the price uh, for for our uh, stock we we have for for the year. Uh, but yes, uh, for the last uh, two years uh, we had this negative uh, result from uh, sales activities. Uh, and I would say this was affected by two different uh, things uh, last year and this year. Uh, last year, 
uh, we had the trend of decreasing prices uh, of, uh, of of crops. So if you have part of your crops uh, not contracted, uh, so this change in price uh, affects uh, your remaining uh, inventory and you could have negative results uh, from sales. And that was actually happened last year. Uh, we also um, uh, could lose uh, in terms of sales, uh, then we have some changes in, in quality uh, of uh, the inventory we have. So actually that's what happened uh, this year. For, for some of the uh, type of, of the crops, uh, we had some, some problems with storage and then quality of, of, of the crops uh, uh, decreased. And that's why we had to sell the, the lower prices when it was uh, booked uh, with our fair value calculation. So overall, I would say we are really trying to, to have this value on, on the market price and there is methodology for that. You know, we are uh, proving this methodology and then we also have auditors looking through that. So, you know, we are trying to show a realistic situation, but some situations uh, give uh, positive or negative effect. And unfortunately for the last couple of years, effect was negative. This year, uh, uh, with the developments I showed, uh, or at least for the second half of the year, with the developments I showed you the prices, there is a chance uh, that if this trend will continue, we could have positive effect from sales of not contracted uh, crops uh, in the second half of the year. Thank you very much for your answer. Uh, we have received uh, quite a few questions, so let's proceed. Comparing your estimated EBITDA this year versus your mid-term guidance, where do you stand now? Do you believe you can still achieve your 2023 EBITDA target? And what would be the main drivers for the EBITDA growth? Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, as we are not uh, publicly announcing our targets, uh, I can't comment uh, you know, how we see uh, uh, our achievement of, of budgeted figures for a year, but obviously, if uh, we say that uh, some developments in uh, crop growing activity mainly uh, will be result when it was so actual result will be lower what we forecasted in, in the beginning of the year. Uh, talking about uh, this uh, longer uh, longer term uh, target of a BDA in 2023, Yes, uh, if we look at uh, current uh, result and ambition in 2023, uh, the gap is quite, uh, quite, quite big. Uh, we also have to uh, maybe uh, remind that when we did this announcement, uh, we also said that these 45 million euros of a BDA, which we said that we are aiming to achieve in 2023, are based on the conditions uh, we had in 2019, meaning cost level, uh, prices, etc. So these uh, uh, indicators changes and they have some effect on, on, on the result, what we can achieve. But, you know, this is not like excuse from my side, but just to clarification, you know, why this figure could be slightly different from uh, what we targeted. But overall, uh, we still believe uh, that uh, we uh, can improve uh, our results significantly to the level which was announced. Uh, because uh, uh, when we did this plan, uh, our gain in, for example, yields, uh, uh, gain uh, yields of crops or gain uh, yields uh, in uh, dairy business came not only from like daily activities, what we do every day, but also from through some technologies which uh, will be implemented. So though uh, I would say uh, maybe we were too optimistic with development of technologies and maybe we are a little bit uh, late with some of them, but uh, you know, if we will uh, uh, start using those technologies, uh, this should uh, give us a result we planned in the very beginning. So maybe with some delay in time, we will still will, uh, have a possibility to, to, to improve uh, uh, results what we are having today. Uh, not, you know, to be very, very general and give you maybe specific example. Even today, if we look uh, through uh, results of our different farms uh, and different companies in uh, crop growing business, we have uh, very uh, different uh, yields uh, per company. 
you know, we can have like 50%, 60, 70% difference of yields uh, in different companies. And there is the reason behind that, because some of them, they are already using some of technologies we are developing, some of they are working uh, on like uh, normal uh, old time methods. Uh, as one of the examples, uh, we can use uh, organic fertilizers. Uh, and we see that if we can use them in liquid form, it, it gives much better result. So, you know, it's just a matter of technology, how you create that, how you apply that, how you use that. But we already see that some of the farms which at least use part of the things we are developing right now, we already get uh, better, uh, better yields. So then we will be ready to have full product cycle in place. Then we'll be ready to use the same technology in all our farms. Uh, we can expect uh, better uh, yields uh, in agriculture. We can expect uh, better yields in terms of uh, dairy uh, business. So we still believe that uh, this this uh, can be achieved. Uh, though, of course, as I said in the beginning, you know we have maybe some 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 projects uh, with some delay that it was the first plan, but uh, we don't have any let's say setbacks. And we said that some of the things we planned doesn't uh, work uh, or we abandoned it at all. Thank you very much uh, for the very comprehensive answer. And another question is also related with the future, uh, and it says, looking 10 years ahead, could fast-moving uh, consumer good business become number one business segment for AUGA? Because this business segment looks more attractive from growth and scale perspective. Thank you. Um, it's difficult, you know, uh... As, as just a question uh, a few minutes ago pointed out, it's difficult to project uh, what happens with our uh, crop growing business in six months time. So it's very difficult to talk what could happen in 10 years time. Uh, but yes, I think um, uh, if uh, now we move from our today's business to our vision and strategy, how we see our in the future. So definitely, uh, as maybe you know, uh, our goal as a company is really to create a new way how agriculture can be done in sustainable way so generally we want to create technology how agriculture which is generally the largest second largest polluter in the world how all these processes can work differently without negative uh, cost uh, to nature so the next uh, step in the strategy is that you know if you really need if you really want that this technology uh, uh, will be used. So generally you have to have a uh, link directly to your final consumers, because only then you can go to consumers and say that, you know, we want to offer you uh, key uh, products, uh, food products, which are produced in completely different way than, than others are doing today. It's not conventional food, it's not organic food, but it's organic and it's also sustainable, meaning that you know, it was produced without uh, cost to nature through CO2 emissions, et cetera, et cetera. So if final consumer, and then we see uh, that final consumers, they are, you know, this uh, really becomes the key priority for them when making uh, buying decisions. So, you know, if we could come up with uh, the offer, and today there are no similar offers, uh, offerings in, in the market. You know, if, if you are consumer and if you are, uh, thinking about sustainability, and this is really important criteria for, for you. And our surveys uh, all over the world shows that uh, for younger generation, uh, for generation with higher income, this is really like a key uh, priority making uh, buying decisions. You know, you can't uh, find uh, anything uh, to buy. You can buy organic, but organic not, is not always sustainable. And if we will be able to produce uh, this new type of, of, of product and we will reach, uh, and the only way to reach those consumers is uh, through FMCG products. So this is the only way how we can implement our strategy. So definitely FMCG is very important business for us. Uh, and then we really see this as a key element uh, of our future. Thank you very much uh, for your answer. And it seems that we have the last question remaining for today, which is as follows. 
what is the significance of high bond turnover? Doesn't it simply mean that someone's gaining interest, but somebody's losing interest in the bonds, hence insignificant? Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question. No, it's, uh, it, it's the same question when you have like a glass of water, you know, is it full or it's full, uh, full, uh, half full or half empty? So you can, of course, look into this from different angles. But I think um, from our perspective, uh, we are a listed company. Uh, we have a couple thousands of shareholders. Uh, but uh, I think everyone knows uh, that uh, liquidity in the Baltic market in general um, you know, we would like it to be higher. We would like more and more people uh, coming to the market, uh, uh, investing into companies, not only our other listed companies, because we believe uh, that there is benefit uh, from being listed company. And, you know, if the market grows in general, if number of investors, either to bonds, either to shares uh, grows, it really creates more opportunities for everyone in, in the longer term. So, you know, if uh, someone decides to invest uh, into bonds, uh, so hopefully he or she will read something about Auga. Maybe she or he will find something which is interesting and maybe someday they will decide to invest into that. You know, from other perspective, uh, the more uh, public we have investing into financial instruments in a longer perspective, I believe this is really useful for all financial markets. So, yes, this is really long shot and in a short period of time, of course, uh, person asking this is really right. You know, there is no uh, gain, financial gain uh, just right away from, from uh, bigger bonds turnover, but in a longer perspective, uh, this, uh, I think uh, all of us will benefit from, from that. Thank you very much uh, for the last answer to the last question as we have covered all of them. So on behalf of Nasdaq Vilnius and Auga Group, thank you everyone. It was our pleasure being with you today. The recording of the presentation will be available in the Nasdaq Baltic YouTube channel. Uh, dear Mr. Ambrosas, thank you for the presentation and a very good Q&A session. Have a good evening everyone and goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.